What's going on guys, it is Caleb, and today we're going to be continuing where we left off last week, and today we're going to be starting Objects 2. Um, I'll also, if you haven't already uh, done the project, there will be a uh, project video out soon if it's not already out, depending on when I upload this video. But, long story short, let's go ahead and get started, and introduction to Objects 2. So, if you're not already at CodeAcademy.com, make sure to head over there. Also, if you're not already subscribed, nor if you're not in full screen, make sure to do both of those right now. And let's go ahead and get started. Review the story so far. So let's review objects and introduce some new concepts to familiar constructions. So let's go ahead and reset our code. All right, an object review. Let's review the basic of objects covered in our previous lesson on objects. Recall that we can create objects using either literal notation or constructor notation. Literal notation creates a single object. Literal notation uses curly brackets, and the object's default properties are defined within the brackets using the property and then the value notation. Construction, con constructor notation involves defining an object constructor. Like defining a function, we use the function keyword. You think of this constructor as a template from which you wish to create multiple objects. To create an, a new object from a constructor, we use the new keyword. So the instructions are, finish the James object by adding properties to it. His job should be programmer and should have a married property set the faults. Create a new Gabby object using the person constructor. She should have a job of student and her married property should be true. So let's go ahead and do this by adding in some properties to our James object. And the first property that it wanted us to add in was this job. Not only that, James had a job of being a programmer. So let's go ahead and type in programmer. And we should all be familiar on how they can make uh, values and objects in here. And properties, in other words. So let's go ahead and add the married. And married is going to be set to false. Now that we have that, we should come down here and create a new Gabby object. So var Gabby equals new person because we are creating a person. Not only are we creating a person, but person takes into um, parameters. It takes in the job and whether or not if it, he or she is married. So the job of our new person, Gabby, is going to be student. And she is married, so we go ahead and say true. Now, if we go ahead and submit our code, we get the green light, so let's go on to the next lesson. And let's just reset our code. Fun with functions. Recall that we can add methods and example functions associated with objects to a constructor. Function some object, this dot some method equals function, some code, and then we're closing off our function. Suppose we said var some object equals new some object. When we call some object that some method, the code between the curly brackets above will be ran, or will run. The instructions are to add a speak method to the person constructor. Whenever speak is called, it should print hello to the console. Okay, so we can already see we have our person constructor. Let's go ahead and write our um our speak function. So Within our person constructor, let's go ahead and say var speak equals function. Now, we're not going to pass anything through these option parameters, but what we will do is console.log, console.log, there we go, console.log our um, hello, and add a semicolon. Now that we have it, um, now that we have our function, and uh, all we have to do now is just call our person dot speak. So let's see. I don't think it wants us to call it. I think it just wants us to add it. So let's see what we get if we uh, save and submit. Sweet. So we get the green light. So let's go on to the next lesson. And let's just reset the code. Literally speaking, in the last exercise, we added methods to objects via constructor no notation. We can also add methods to objects in literal notation as well. var some object equals a property name value, some method function, some parameters, curly braces, and then we close out our whole object. 
When we call some object that some method some values, the code between the curly brackets is ru will run. Note, here we see a method that takes parameters. Methods define in both constructors, and literal notation can take parameters, just like form or just like normal functions. The instructions are: take a look at the par partially defined James object. Complete the speak method such that the two or the, the last two lines in the editor will cause "Hello, I'm feeling great" and "Hello, I'm feeling just okay" to be printed out to the console. So as we can see, it looks like they're just passing in um, what you want him to say, such as in "great" and "just okay." So this is going to at the very end of the um, "Hello, I'm feeling." So let's go ahead and copy the first little bit of text right here. Now if we go ahead and go up into our James object, you see that I already started to write the speak property for us. Now what we can pass in here is a, a, a variable, and we can just name it text, and this is going to reference our text that we're being passed through here. So in this example, the great text, or the great, which is a string, is going to uh, refer to text. So uh, you'll see in a second what we'll do with this. So if we console.log, once again, we're going to write out to our console. And here, if we go ahead and paste the first part of hello, I'm feeling, now add a space, and then we add our text to it, we should get hello, I'm feeling, and then whatever the text that we pass through. So if we go ahead and try to run this, we should get hello, I'm feeling great, and hello, I'm feeling just okay. So we got the green light. Let's go on to the next lesson. And once again, let's just reset. Can I see your ref references? Remember when defining a method for an object, it's easy to reference other properties in that object. Just use this dot property name. When that method is called, this dot property name will refer to the most recent value of property name. The instructions are: take a look at the James object. Complete the say job method so that it will print out to the console hi. I work as and then job. So wherever where job is the value of the job property. Then in line 14, change job for James to super programmer. Although the method calls in lines 11 and 17 are exactly the same, their output should be different because James' job changed. So to go ahead and get started, let's go up here within our James object and finish out our say job function. So let's just go ahead and console.log. Because once again, we're just going to write out to the console. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the hi I work as job. And um, I'm going to paste this within our console. And get the first little quote. So fix that. So here we have console.log hi, comma, I work as a, and then you just have job. So what we want to do here is delete that to where now we just have hi, I work as a, and then we're going to. Once again, we're going to use our plus sign, but this time we're going to reference our object. And to do that, we're going to use this. Not only are we going to do that, but we're going to define, or we're going to reference, or we're specifically going to reference this job. So we're going to say this.job. So whatever object is calling this say job function, it will um, reference their job. So it's going to say, hi, I work as a blah and whatever job they may have. So if it was James, he's going to work as a programmer. And to finish this off, just add our semicolon. Now what it wants us to do, down here it says James, first job. So this is just referencing James. And this should print out that James is a programmer. Now it wants us to change his job to super programmer. And to do that, we just say James.job. We're using dot notation here. Equals and we're just going to assign it the new value that it wants us to say. And it wants us to say that he's a super programmer now, instead of just a programmer. Now that James is now advanced and became a super programmer, and now it wants us to uh, print it out again, which it's already doing that for us. So if we go ahead and um, programmer has two M's, if we go ahead and uh, try and run this, we should get the green light. And which we do, and as you can see, hi, I work as a programmer is, is uh, printed out to our console as long or as well as uh, hi, I work as a super programmer. So as you can see there, it changed um, James's job property. It updated it, in other words, and then we called the say job 
function again and it just printed out his new job. So if you're following along, you should get the green light. And let's go on to the next lesson. And once again, let's just reset. Who's in your bracket? And finally, let's go over retrieving property values. Throughout this section, we've been using dot notation to get the value of an object's property, some object dot property name. However, remember that we can also use bracket notation, some object, open bracket, and then we're quoting whatever the property name is that we're trying to specify. And then we're closing off our bracket. An advantage to or an advantage of bracket notation is that we're not restricted to just using strings in the bracket. We can also use variables whose values are property names. So, for example, var some object equals property name some value. Var my property equals property name. Some object and here we're using bracket notation to specify or reference my property. So that will just refer back to our property name here and whatever object that we're using or creating. So the last line is exactly the same as using some object, property name, and they're calling it using the uh, bracket notation instead of dot notation. So take advantage of the ability to use variables with bracket notation in line 7. Set a property to a string of the first property in James, an example the job property. Then print James job using bracket notation and a property. Okay, so it wants us to create a variable called a property and it wants us to reference that to James's job. Then what we're going to use or what we're going to do is we're going to use the bracket notation that we just covered and we're going to pass in a property which is the variable that we just created instead of saying James's job. So that's fairly easy. All we have to do is to set a property to job. And what this will do, this will reference his um, property's name whenever we pass it through bracket notation instead of saying job in quotation marks. And I'll show you a side-by-side -side comparison of that in a second. Now what we want to do is just console.log because we're going to print out to our console once again. And this time we're going to say James because James is our object's name. Not only is it our object's name, but we're going to use the bracket notation and we're going to specify a property. Now if we go ahead and um, add our semicolon, that's the same thing as if we were to say console.log James and but instead of saying a property we're just going to say job not hob but job there we go and now this is going to refer to here we have a um I was saying because I double quote it so if we just say job with one quote there we go see what we get here oh but it's saying it's better written in dot notation okay so just ignore the little um triangle right there but for demonstration purposes um console.log James and then you're quoting job is still going to refer to the programmer. So if we were to go ahead and save and submit our code as is, um, I'm pretty sure we still pass, but I'm not sure if we would get the green light uh, just because we ha we're not uh, specifying this. But let's go ahead and see what we get. So yeah, we get we get the faults. So let's go back, go back to our editor and remove this bottom line. But um, that was just for you guys to see. So if we submit now, we should get the uh, green light. So congratulations, you finished this section. And back to an introduction to Objects 2. So stay tuned, guys, for the next video. If this video helped you guys out, and um, hopefully I made myself clear with the uh, bracket notation in this exercise. Um, hopefully you guys understood what I was meaning by uh, the property name in quotes and also comparing it to using the property name with the variable. So if you didn't catch that or if you still have any problems with it, just leave a comment down below, and I'll try to uh, further explain that. Also, if you guys aren't already subscribed, make sure to subscribe, like the video, and until next time, guys, have a nice night. Caleb, peace.